So today I want to talk about what makes a good trucking accident lawyer. What is the best trucking accident lawyer? What's the difference between a good one and a not so good one? So if you're watching this video, you've probably already decided that you need a lawyer. But if you're not quite there yet, check out our video on what a personal injury lawyer does and you can decide whether you need one or don't need one. So in terms of what makes a good trucking accident lawyer, I want to use the analogy of any service you might hire, right? So a leaf removal service or a pool cleaning service or a plumber or a body shop for your car or a mechanic. So one way to hire those people is to just see a sign on the side of the road, leaf removal, call this number, and then you call that number and down the line for all those other services I just named. And that might work, right? The guy that comes up to clean your yard or fix your car, your car gets fixed, the leafs get removed, and you'll know whether they did a good job or not. Filing a lawsuit, hiring a lawyer, it's not like that. And the reason is you're not necessarily going to know, right, whether the leaves got removed, to stick with this example, because you might not really know whether you got the best return, the best outcome in your case that you could. So one thing to think about in terms of accident law firms, especially the ones that advertise, is that there's a premium on getting things closed, cases closed, getting things moved. And that incentivizes sometimes just moving on, uh, closing a file, taking the payday, moving on to the next one. So it may be the case in these trucking accidents that your case is a little bit complicated. It's got some facts in it that make it tough. I'm going to tell you a story in just a second about a case like that that we had. But what happens in some of these law firms is that their incentive is simply to convince you to take a discount on your case so that that law firm can then move on, take the payday, move on to the next one. So we had a case where a tractor trailer flipped over on its side and obstructed the entire interstate. And our clients came along in their car and could not stop in time because this tractor trailer was blocking the whole road and they hit it and they got bad injuries from that. But right after they hit it, their car also flipped over onto its side and another car came along and hit them again. So now we have two impacts, right? The first one hitting the truck and then the second thing after that. So the insurance company for the trucking company says, well, yeah, maybe our guy was negligent, but you can't prove that the injuries that you got were caused by that impact rather than the impact from this second car coming along and hitting you. So right there, some law firms might just say, yeah, you know what? We can't prove it. You really need to take this discounted settlement that they're offering because they think they're not responsible for all of your injuries. In order to prove your injuries, you're going to have to go to trial or go get an expert. It's going to cost a lot of money, yada, yada, yada. So that's what we did in our case. We hired a biomechanical expert who is, uh, those people are not cheap. <laughs> they're uh, like engineering degrees. They're, they're very expensive experts. We put our own capital at risk and we got a better result. As a result, we got an expert that could prove that based on the various impacts and, you know, forces in play, the physics, uh, those injuries were caused by that first impact. And so we got a better result for our client as a result of that. But I don't think that a lot of law firms would go that step. Some might just say, let's just take the discount, not take the risk, move on to the next one. So the question is, how do you know which kind of law firm you have, right? How can you tell whether this lawyer or that lawyer might be willing to do that? So one thing I would look at is when you hire a law firm, do you ever talk to a lawyer, right? A lot of firms, you'll do the intake process through a call center or uh, some sort of answering service. You might get sent some paperwork to sign. You might talk with some sort of intake person, but that person's likely not to be a lawyer. So when do you meet a lawyer? When do you talk to a lawyer about your case? That would be my first question. The next thing would be, what sort of experience does this lawyer have in your type of case? We're talking about trucking accidents, but this actually goes for all types of cases. 
So have they filed cases like this in court? Can they send you copies of that? Have they filed cases like this in federal court? Look at the work that they've done and say, does this person look like they really know what they're doing? Or is this someone who's going to say, yeah, your case is really getting a little over my head. Take a discount so we can move on, right? That's the advice that I have for anyone looking at, should I hire a trucking accident lawyer? And how do I decide what the best trucking accident lawyer is? So those are just some thoughts. Let me know in the comments if that's been helpful. Let us know if we can help you out. Thanks so much for watching.